I took a 1957 extremely neglected kitchen and with the help of my husband transformed this space into a beautiful European cottagey chic kitchen of my dreams. So here is a brief recap of everything that we shown you in the first video. Guys, this is a DIY extreme kitchen makeover. So let's get on with the video. In this video, you're gonna see the full kitchen reveal of the extensive transformation that this room has gone under. Now, before you go scrubbing and watching all of the final images, I want to share with you guys how easy it is to obtain a very similar look on a budget. We wanted to put our own thumbprint onto this kitchen. I had a very specific idea in mind and I knew that it was just going to be such a hassle to try to explain exactly what I wanted to various people. So. I knew that we could also do it. I was confident in my husband's skills and I was confident in what I can do to bring this together. Now, one of the things that I wanted to share with you guys is that while this looks really rich and expensive, it was not. I mean, it wasn't cheap by any means. Today's standard for a full kitchen renovation, you know, in a modest home can be anywhere from twenty to $50,000 and up and that is including the cabinetry, countertops, flooring, and appliances. We chose to use Home Depot stock cabinets. They are wood cabinets. There are some veneer sides to the cabinet, but the face and the doors are all genuine wood. There is a workaround for these cabinets. Nowadays, there are so many aftermarket parts you can add to the cabinet that can give you that custom feel. Number one, we painted it with a very high grade cabinetry paint from Bear, and we did several coats of that. I purchased hardware from Amazon that looked really luxe. I thought that the poles for the cabinet added a lot of charm and it gave it that sort of old library feel to it. I thought it was very different from standard poles and knobs that you can get. So. Um, that was one of the ways that we attempted in making the Home Depot cabinets a little bit more special. One of the major ways we completely upgraded these cabinets was by buying a beautiful piece of stone for it. I chose marble and I chose something with very minimal veining. I wanted it to be somewhat somewhat minimal but had a little texture in it and I couldn't have fallen in love more with this particular pattern. The tones were just, they have light gray tones and beiges in there and I was very pleased. The company that we chose was Stellar. They came right in, they were so quick and so efficient and we were really, really just taken back by the overall beauty that the piece of stone gave these cabinets. Something that I wanted to add is that I almost opted out of having an island in my kitchen because I thought that the space was too small. My husband and I were thrifting. We came across this very narrow little desk and it had already had someone who sanded it all down. So the work was already done for me. Well, for $25, I definitely was going to use it somewhere if it wasn't going to work in the kitchen. This is now where I chop and where I set my groceries down when I come home. I wanna take you through really quickly on how my husband sort of designed this whole piece together and we really made it tie into the whole kitchen. forgot to add that we chose to not do uppers. We chose open shelving because that's just something that I personally love and I wanted to make it look like a little old French bakery. And so I had my husband go to Home Depot and get some pine boards and he sanded them down. He even um, created some really cool shapes to it so that it looked distressed. It looked um, it looked like it came from an old barn and that's what we were trying to mimic. Then we went on Amazon and purchased these, um, really cool steel, um, anchors. They hold a hundred pounds each. So each board has about three or four anchors in them. 
So when we are putting our dishes, we do not have to worry that the shelf is going to collapse or tilt forward. Then I decided that on the other side of the wall, I didn't really want to run shelving on that side of the wall. So what I did was I chose to use these glass sliding door bookcases from Wayfair. Um, they were the only ones when I was Googling that were the exact size that I needed for those two spaces on um, left and right of the wall where the refrigerator is centered. The bookshelves had that beautiful old world look already to them. Then I decided to give it a little bit more of a special touch by buying this brass hardware from Signature Hardware. This just really accented the cabinet with just this old world look to it of these bookshelves. So we can't forget, we can't forget the most exhausting part of the whole transformation was this stone wall. Guys, I had purchased the stone with all anticipation on just, you know, getting some mortar and sticking it back there, doing the German schmear and calling a day. But these stones literally took us an additional month because leave it to me, I decided to cut and clip and piece together a particular pattern on the wall. I wasn't necessarily crazy of the pattern that came on the sheet. We use these special clippers and we were cutting every single stone by hand from a very thick gauge steel mesh that was that it was attached to. That was a challenge. And then not to mention, we had purchased the wrong mortar. We had bought thin set, which was the wrong type of product that you need for such a heavy stone. So we had to go back we went to Home Depot and we bought large format tile mortar in white. So when we were clipping all of the stones, we realized that the bigger stones were just not adhering. We had so much trouble that we decided to just take some industrial Gorilla Glue and some anchors and screw them into the wall and just keep going that way. So it was just row by row by row by row all the way around the kitchen um, until we had all the stones up and then we decided to um, grout afterwards. This was also very labor intensive. We had to make small batches because it's it dries up so fast. So between my husband and I, we were working on a five gallon bucket and only filling it halfway. And literally I got to the point where I just had gloves and I was making balls and just throwing it and flinging it onto the wall. I don't have a clip of that. I don't know why. I guess I was just so exhausted with this project. I just was like in another space in my mind. Guys, I literally, you know how, if you've ever seen how they make adobe homes with the clay. You know, it's sort of the same process. They make the, they have the terracotta clay and they're just, you know, flinging it and shaping it. That was, that was pretty much what we were doing at this point. Um, there was no piping, there was no spackling, none of that. Because we had so much coverage to fill, we at this point were literally like making snowballs and whacking it on the wall. And then we were just taking the glove, I'm sorry, then we were taking the sponge, a damp sponge and really sort of like, it was starting to all come together once that wet sponge hit that mortar. We were able to manipulate it and slide it and glide it and push it and it started to all come together. But because we had to work in small batches, it was so tiring guys so with that being said it took an additional couple weeks to get that finalized and we only really finished that stone wall just a week ago so if you're wondering why the video took so long it was the wall the wall took so long i'm so thrilled to have it all finished now so one of the last things i want to share with you guys in attaining something very similar is that it's all about the details once we were done with the overall wall and the stone, I decided to now take all of my accent pieces and really put it together. So I bought lights from Amazon and the little curtains are from Amazon. Everything is going to be linked in the description box down below, so make sure that you take a look. You know, guys, um, all those little details are what really makes the kitchen um, have so much appeal. The the drapery you use, the um, the lighting you select, the flooring you choose, 
the hardware, you know, the sink, the faucet, all of those play a factor in tying it all together. Now the open shelving, I knew I wanted to display my dishes. Um, and I also wanted to put my pottery on there and, you know, I can mix, I can change it out from time to time. And so that was something that was very important to me. So, you know, just consider that sometimes you may not have a kitchen that is ideal to you, a simple can of paint and just changing out curtains and maybe changing out the hardware from your cabinets can make so much of a difference that it would really make it look fresh and new to you. So these are, these are the ways that I can, you know, share with you guys on how to replicate a very expensive look by just doing a few things. Um, you know, we custom made our own kitchen, but then we decided to put money into other areas that made it more special to us. And this is what this channel is about, right? This channel is about me sharing with you how I DIY things and how I buy things and how to put it all together. So I hope that this inspired you. I hope that this makes your wheels turn if you are looking to renovate or transform or refresh your kitchen. Um, we are so proud of it. We are so proud of this whole journey um, of what we've accomplished so far in the little over three months we've been here. We have many other transformations coming. So you definitely, if you have not subscribed to this channel, subscribe. If this is your type of thing you like to binge watch on, I have a bedroom and bathroom and so many other transformation guys that are very, very exciting. This house was a blank canvas. So there is a lot to show. <laughs> there is a lot that we've done. So you definitely want to tune in, make sure that you're, you put the bell notification on so that you don't miss any of the future content.